Greetings and welcome to the Fox Institute for Creation and Spirituality's November Meet and Greet webinar. I'm Kip Hubbard, Director of Outreach and Communications here at the Institute. I'd like to welcome all of our viewers as well as our distinguished guests. They will both be teaching at our first intensive week coming up January 8th through 12th here at our beautiful brand new campus in downtown Boulder, Colorado. Our first guest is Marvin Lee Anderson, PhD. He is a, presently a visiting fellow at the Center for Reformation and Renaissance Studies at the University of Toronto, where he continues to research the historical influence of late medieval German mysticism on the German Reformation. He publishes and consults widely on the practice of rural congregational ministry, on which he has taught for numerous theological faculties and seminaries in Canada and the United States. He lives in Toronto with his wife and sons. Marvin will be teaching Anger and Betrayal in America's Heartland, the seminar portion of, of this first January intensive. Welcome, Marvin. Thank you. And I'd also like to welcome Dr. David Sharp. David is an ordained Presbyterian minister and president of Power for Life Now Productions, a company that develops resources for spiritual empowerment. He is also on the core faculty here at the Fox Institute for Creation and Spirituality. He has performed on Broadway, in movies, and on television, and has written for a variety of publications. David's recently published book, I'm a Black Man, Who Are You?, focuses on issues of race, culture, and spirituality. And his forthcoming book, Inspirational Guidance for Daily Living is due for release in the fall of 2018 by Woodland Books. David will be teaching the artist meditation course, singing and embodying the African-American spiritual freedom and protest song. Greetings, David. Thank you. And I might add that David is a local Boulderite, so we see a lot of him. We're happy about that. <laughs> So let's uh, let's start. Let's talk a little bit about uh, your respective courses, and I'll begin with Marvin. Uh, Marvin, tell us a little about a little bit about the upcoming seminar, "Anger and Betrayal in America's Heartland." I'd be happy to, uh, Kip, and thank you for your kind uh, introduction. Uh, just over a year ago, prior to the uh, presidential election of uh, President Trump, I uh, heard a a riveting interview on the radio, on CBC radio here in Toronto with um, uh, Professor uh, Arlie Russell Hochschild, who's a, a well-known and, and a prolific sociologist in Berkeley. And she had just authored and published a new book called um, Strangers in Her Own Land, Anger and Mourning on the American Right. And even before that time, uh, of her book's releases, and since then, I can't tell you how many times we've heard the word uh, polarization on uh, newscasts, and it's disconcerting how uh, polarized uh, uh, the situation is now uh, in the states uh, between so-called red and, and uh, blue states. And so this course is to address that um, polarization. I think we all rush to judgment, and what uh, Hawkshild does in her book, in her interviews with hundreds of people in Louisiana, of all places, is to listen to the anger, the resentment, the sense of betrayal uh, uh, that she heard and all the people that she met with and socialized with uh, in her research in Louisiana. And so this course will pick up on that. And without stopping to listen to these deep stories, as she calls them, we won't be able to understand or appreciate the anguish and pain of these people, often in, in red states. And I come from the big red state of uh, my beloved Nebraska. So I'm concerned about where and how this uh, pain and anguish is expressed, especially through, uh, through anger. And secondly, this course wants to differentiate and clarify for all of us that anger isn't only um, you know, a, a violent expression. It often gives license to outbursts of uh, blaming, shaming, and scapegoating. But anger is meant to help us uh, take care of ourselves. Uh, it's a God-given signal. But we know the power and danger of anger 
And we often think of it only in those negative terms in terms of uh, how it lends to or leads to and, set, and often justifies uh, violent expressions. But anger is integral in any kind of you know, movement for social change. And so anger is meant to take care of us, but if we don't know how to take care of our anger, it can easily go underground and we can often use it to, to harm others. And I think we've seen that time and time again in the past a year, if not before. And so I want to help us clarify, but also differentiate the capacity of anger as a, uh, a way to, to, uh, uh, to use that fire and passion for compassion so that anger can be used to, to, uh, uh, to amend some of the uh, violence and injustice that we see all around us. Well, thank you, Marvin. And you, you touched on this, but um, so for a prospective student uh, that would come and take this class, it, it's a pertinent top topic, obviously. And tell me, tell us why. Uh, because we've, as I've suggested, uh, Kip, we've we've tend to associate anger only with uh, its negative um, expressions and manifestations, and I think we all are trying to make sense of and understand what it means to be angry and also understand the ways in which we've uh, been hurt and how we process our pain. And because we have such ambivalence, uh, culturally speaking, around anger, we don't recognize that it can be a tool for, uh, for the good. I mean, compare the anger expressed in the, among the KKK and the white supremacists in uh, Charlottesville, Virginia, last uh, August, for example, with some of the anger that's been channeled uh, for the good by a whole coalition, a very unlikely coalition of environmentalists, indigenous people, farmers, ranchers, environmentalists in the panhandle of Nebraska in fighting uh, the Keystone XL. So Bull Nebraska is the expression of anger as the work of love. Anger is that capacity. It's prophetic. It's God-given. It's a biblical thing, but we've often seen it and understood it as only a bad thing and so we, re we repressed it, we buried it, we denied it. We've done everything but listen to what it's all about because it's all about the fire within us that something is awry and something has to be done. <clears throat> well, that, thank you so much, Marvin. And, uh, it's, it's fascinating and I, th I think it'll be a, uh, a, a powerful course. And uh, that leads me to, to ask David, um, which, I, I feel like both of the titles of these these courses are 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 very uh, supercharged in a way. Um, your course, David, is singing and embodying the African American spiritual freedom and protest song. And this is not just about history. This is not just about slavery. This is really about embodiment of uh, some of what Marvin's talked about um, in his course. Can you talk a little bit about your course and how it would dovetail with what Marvin's teaching? Sure thing. Um, you know, spirituals came from the suffering of a people, mm -hmm. and it uh, kept our souls strong and our spirits alive. Uh, you know, you might uh, think about uh, Maya Angelou's uh, work, the, I Know Why the mm -hmm. Cave Bird Sings. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, you know, those, those, those souls that were in slavery couldn't get out of it. Um, one way to survive is to is to is to keep your soul alive, keep your spirit strong until that day comes. So this is where the spirituals, uh, which means sacred connection to God, it's God that kept us alive through song. It gave us strength and hope where there didn't seem to be one. This is why we can say we know that God can make a way out of no way, even if that way is not my generation, but the next generation or the next generation who will see freedom. So the freedom songs and the protest songs are, are coming through the souls of an oppressed people. But there are hundreds of these songs and they found their way into our hymn books. Why? Because they're filled with the divinity. They're filled with with strength for life. And that's why we sing them. Uh, probably a lot of people don't even know they're from African American culture, some of these spirituals. They've been mainstreamed. So we're going to recapture them, look at, the oh. divinity, look at the divinity within them, embody them, which means we're going we're gonna to take a slow look and uh, um, see how they make us feel, see what the themes are within these songs, 
why they were sung then, and why we might uh, really uh, uh, understand their power for our time, and why they're sung today. Um, yes, uh, these people were angry. They, they knew their situation in life. So dovetailing into Marvin's course, we're gonna see that um, how people can transform their anger into hope, right. transform their anger uh, into looking to beyond their present circumstances, uh, look for the God that created their life, uh, understanding they still have their dignity, they still are worthy people. And so these songs, none of them are angry. It's in really interesting. Um, they can speak to their situation that they don't blame God. Uh, uh, the betrayal can be transformed into understanding that God would never betray, but uh, even if they're betrayed by other human beings. So uh, these songs are deeply spiritual from a deeply spiritual people who connected to the God of this land, Jesus, and created mm. songs that, that, uh, that are still alive. Um, and, and with Marvin's course, it's going to be a very interesting um, um, look at these two frameworks to see how they're going to speak to the soul of the students. <laughs> well, thank you both so much. This is really going to be an exciting week. And I know that I'll be uh, have the opportunity to sit in a little bit and um, hear both of you teach. And I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'd like to backpedal a little bit here and, uh, and talk a little bit about the Fox Institute and um, tell our viewers what separates um, our institution from other graduate programs. So specifically, um, Marvin, um, we've talked about the core courses, um, both the, the seminar or both the seminar and the, uh, the artist meditation. Can you explain specifically the, the seminar portion of the Fox Institute pedagogy and why it's unique? Why is it different from other graduate programs? I'd be happy to, uh, Kip. Uh, I mean, it's fairly common now in terms of we, we talk about left and right brain uh, activity. And, um, and the seminar is, um, a, is focused on more of the, the left brain, uh, the left hemisphere of the brain in terms of our capacity to analyze, to, to think critically, to ask questions, to, uh, to look discursively at situations. Uh, and, and that's often the case in higher education. That's what we do in the classroom. But frequently, the classroom has lost that capacity to, to uh, ask questions and to engage that learning with real hunger or real curiosity. We've often killed curiosity. And I think certainty uh, is often overrated. <laughs> and we need to ask questions and be open to them and let the questions guide us and take us to places where we haven't gone before to make connections between things. And so the, the seminar is really suited to to engage our faculties, which in the Middle Ages was our capacity to to think, you know, as well as to, to process that. And so, uh, so that's an opportunity to really uh, take ideas seriously, and uh, and not uh, shut them down uh, for need to having to resolve things. Right. Exactly. And uh, David, um, so you teach a lot of art as meditation. You are a performer. You are uh, you are a uh, a singer. Uh, you've you've been in movies. You've been on TV. Um, this is your life. So, can you tell us what differentiates um, art as meditation in our pedagogy from the what Marvin just explained in in the seminar left brain uh, portion of this? How does art as meditation <laughs> and that creative side fit in? Uh, creativity transcends, you know, what might be said as the left brain. Uh, creativity touches the soul in a different way. It speaks its own language. It's a more intuitive. Um, and, and creativity uh, sort of um, uh, connects us to the, to the greater part of us. Our, our left brains are right there in our minds. It's our intelligence. But the right brain is very expansive. And so artist meditation allows us to focus on our, um, on these art forms. I mean, it could be anything. It could be washing dishes, but we're not going to teach washing dishes at FICS. 
you know, parenthood is, is an art form. Anything can become an art form. But, you know, we do things like writing and movement and song and music and drumming and Tai Chi, fine arts, drawing, uh, collage. I mean, there's so many. Uh, but the creativity allows us to have breakthroughs of insight and understanding. Um, they connect us to ourselves in a way that uh, can fuel our own growth um, and can result in the transformation of an individual. Art is meditation is meditation. So that's the real important part. It's the meditation that's the important part. And the, and the meditation opens the door to inspiration and guidance for our own journeys ahead. Also, it helps us to uh, integrate and synthesize what's going on in the left brain. So in Marvin's case, in Marvin's class, they'll come to mind and whatever happens in that class right. will help them synthesize and integrate Amen. what's happening in Marvin's class also. Right. Right. Well, thank you. Thank you both. And, and uh, we've seen it before. We've seen uh, the previous uh, intensive weeks with the students coming out uh, incredibly empowered, refreshed, uh, stimulated, uh, tweaked. Uh, on all different levels, and it's it's really exciting. Um, I, I'd like to thank you both for being here and 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 explaining a little bit about what you'll be teaching. Uh, Marvin Lee Anderson, PhD. Uh, Dr. David Sharp. Uh, you, uh, you 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 viewers out there that are interested in joining the Fox Institute, you can study with uh, both Marvin and David this January eighth through the twelfth here at the Fox Institute. Uh, and if you'd like further information. Uh, or would like to be added to our mailing list, you can visit us at foxinstitute-cs.org, uh, or you can call Dr. Carol Bennington, who is our Dean of Students, at 720-880-3477. Uh, her number again is 720-880-3477. Stay tuned for more uh, webinars, future information coming up about uh, upcoming intensives here at the Fox Institute, and I hope we'll see you in Boulder. I'm Kip Hubbard, signing off.